I'm using OBS for Zoom professional presentations, and recently I've updated to version 28. But did it do the right thing? The main issue with OBS version 28 is that not all plugins have been updated yet as I speak now. Those that are missing are very clear, and you can check them in the dedicated web page that you can see in the link below. However, there is one thing that I was not expecting that broke my Zoom presentation. More about it in a second. In general, when there is such a big update in a software, you should be very careful. And if you're using it for work and you highly depend on it, then probably you shouldn't take the risk. So obviously there will be lots of bug fixes in the upcoming releases. And I suggest you wait a little longer before you update. I had a setup with version 27 that was working properly. But I have a YouTube channel where I speak a lot about the use of OBS for Zoom. So I felt I had to update to find out what's working and what's not working to share it with you. So I've updated to OBS version 28 and you can see the new graphic user interface. I've been using it now for a short time and besides the StreamFX plugin and the NDI plugin not working, almost everything else has been working properly. Almost. Let's now start looking at a basic setup of OBS for Zoom. Well, the first thing is that the camera works and that's a really good start. Another thing that I'm using very often is the mask camera for the picture-in-picture -picture effect. So let's see whether the mask blend filter works. Let's apply a filter to the scene. I'm using nested scenes as usual. If you don't know about all this, I have plenty of tutorials for you. Links are in the description. And let's browse for a mask file. Okay, I have a camera mask. Now let me add it to this large full screen scene and make it smaller. And there we go. Another plugin that I use very often is the Table Transition plugin. Here we have the transitions that are applied by default to the whole presentation. And in this case, I have a fade transition. So if I move from webcam to large full screen, then a fade transition will apply. If I now go to Tools, the Transition Table plugin that was installed previously is still there. With this plugin, I can choose the starting scene, so let's say webcam and the ending scene, and I'll choose the large full screen one, and assign a specific transition to it that will override the general default transition. So I'll add a move transition. You have to make this panel larger, so you can also set the duration, let's make 800 milliseconds, and then to save this transition, you have to click on set. Let's close it. So if I go to large full screen to webcam, the fade transition will apply because it is the default one. But now if I go from webcam to large full screen, I have a move transition. So that works and that's good. Another feature that I'm using very often is the zoom in and follow script. It allows me to zoom in the screen and follow the cursor. So let's see whether it works. I'm in the large full screen share scene and now the zoom works. Now if I move the cursor around, you see that my cursor is followed by the zoom. And if I click again, then I'm back to normal size. And if you're wondering, I'm doing that with the Stream Deck. I've programmed a key that I can activate or disactivate to zoom in or out. And I have a full tutorial on this too. And by the way, if you want to master OBS to elevate your professional presentations, you should check my course. The link is in the description below. One thing that I was really using a lot that actually broke my Zoom presentation is the Downstream Keyer plugin. Downstream Keyer plugin allows you to bring up a source on demand. You don't need to switch scene, but you just press a hotkey and that source will display as an overlay. What does it do? You can basically create a scene, and then put it in the Downstream Keyer doc. Then you assign a hotkey to it, and then when you press that hotkey, then the content of the scene will be superimposed over any other scene that you're broadcasting at that moment. So if I'm sharing my large screen and I hit the hotkey that I've set up, then my camera will appear. And that works on any scene. The plugin itself actually works fine. There's an issue that you've highlighted in the comments of my tutorial. Thank you for spotting this. The plugin works in OBS, 
but when you connect the virtual camera to Zoom, it doesn't work on Zoom, meaning that you'll be seeing the overlay graphics in OBS, but they won't be displayed through the virtual camera in Zoom. I checked the OBS forum and this seems to be a common issue. I'm sure things will be fixed soon, but for now at least there is a workaround that you can check in my next video here.